Hi everyone, it is Friday. It is the 24th of April. Time is flying by very, very quickly. Um, this is Q&A with Dr. B and this is a Friday segment. Guys, today I'm going to be talking about the best stretching and strengthening exercises for your hips, okay? If you've been having hip pain, there's a good chance that one of these exercises will help you. If flexibility is in a suit, you want to focus on the stretching exercises that I'm going to do first. I'm going to do three of each, stretching and strengthening. And if weakness or you lack the strength that you need to perform some of the activities that you need to do, then strengthening or the last three exercises are going to be the best one for you guys to do. Um, if you guys didn't check it out, look on my Facebook page. I had an amazing conversation with Dr. Jay Martin today talking about the intersection between pelvic floor pain and hip pain. Really good conversation for you guys to check out um, if you have some time, okay? So I'm gonna dive right into it, guys. So in terms of stretching exercises, there are quite a few things that you can do. I'm gonna go to the top three exercises in each stretching and the strengthening category. And when I say top exercises, I'm gonna be really focusing on the ones that are most commonly the culprits if you are having hip pain. They're most likely to be tight, they're most likely to be weak. This is not an extensive list by any means, so if you're having specific questions about what's going to be beneficial for you in terms of what's going on with your hip pain, then you want to reach out and have a little bit more of a conversation so you can get some more detailed information. But today I'm going to be focusing on the top three things um, that can happen um, that you need to focus on if you have a flexibility or a tightness issue or if you have a weakness problem or a strength issue. Okay? So I'm going to dive right in. So... For stretching, there are a couple of tools that you can use. You can use a, um, a strap like this. You can use a foam roller like this. Or you can even use like a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball like this. All of these things do to kind of open up um, movement in those muscles and allow a little bit more motion to happen, okay? I'm gonna go through the regular stretching protocol that a lot of physical therapists would use where you go into a position, you stretch your muscle and you hold it there. I'm just gonna go through that, but there are other ways that you can actually improve the flexibility of those muscle groups. So first ones up is your hip flexor, a common muscle that is chronically tight in a lot of people. And even now that we are at home, we're sitting all the time, we're doing a lot of computer work, we're slouching on the couch, those hip flexors can get really tight and start giving you a lot of hip pain and also radiating down to the back, also the lumbar spine. So for hip flexor stretch, you wanna get into this position, a little bit of a half kneeling position. Really important that you flex your pelvis forward or tuck your pelvis forward. So you're squeezing and engaging your glute muscles, squeezing that to rotate your pelvis forward. I recommend that you curl your toes behind, as you can see, and then you go into a nice little bit of a lunge until you feel a nice slight tug in the front of your hip, okay? It is very easy to mess this exercise up, and I say mess in quotation marks, and go into a nice big lunge if you're super flexible, specifically for people that are really, you know, really loosey-goosey or for like my dancers, really easy to go in that and think that you're stretching your hip flexors. You have to isolate that muscle by making sure that the pelvis is lined up. So you squeeze your glute muscles, flex the back and the um, toes underneath, and then go straight ahead. You're going to feel that immediate tug if you are tight, which most people are. For all of the stretches, you want to try and hold it for about 30 seconds, and those will be really helpful for you to start loosening up. Do a couple of those, guys. Go easy and just go into it as you repeat it over time. You will see that you have a little bit more range in terms of how far you can go. And you can see that I'm going a little bit further, even as I'm holding for a couple of seconds. I recommend holding at least 20 to 30 seconds. Um, and that's gonna really open up the hip flexors, which start right at the base of this of the spine, L1 and 2, cross across the pelvis and ends right in front of the hips. Okay? Stretch number one. Stretch number two, guys, that's really important to work on. Hamstring stretch. For this one, you want to get a strap. Okay, you're going to lay onto your back. You want to get the other leg up so if you're protecting your lumbar spine, 
And using that strap, make sure that the leg muscle is relaxing. You're not tensing it up as much as you can. But you do want to make sure that your knee is straight, but you're not overly tensing your quad muscle. And you're going to pull that leg towards you until you feel a stretch in the back of your thigh. And again, depending on your flexibility, some of my dancers would be able to get all the way here. But for you, I want you guys to really focus on when you start feeling a stretch. Okay, the goal here is to stretch and not to cram it into a lot of flexible range. When you feel that stretch, that's where you hang out. And you can hold on to that for, again, at least 20 to 30 seconds is what I would recommend. You can do that for both sides. That stretches the big hamstring muscles that sit right at the base of your pelvis, of your sit bones, and sit all the way towards the end of the knees right here. I'm really responsible for a lot of the rotational components in terms of the front and back, posterior, anterior plane in terms of the pelvis, okay? Third one, which is also a very good one, if you guys listen to my talk about sciatica, this is a very important one that you wanna pay attention to, okay? This is called a piriformis stretch or a figure four stretch. So for this one, you wanna lay onto your back, cross your ankle over your knee, just like that, let the leg fall out to the side, and you're gonna bring your knee into your chest and pull it into your chest as far as you can, trying to keep the knee all the way out to the side. In this position, you wanna start feeling a stretch on your right butt cheek if your right leg is crossed over your leg, okay? Modifications for this, for those guys that are not as flexible to get into this position, you can bring your knee using your hands to guide you to pull it into your chest, a little bit across your body. So think of pulling your right knee to your left shoulder if you're working on the right side. And you should feel that stretch kind of radiating down into the air. This is a little bit of a modification for those guys that are not as flexible, okay? And again, you wanna hold for a couple of seconds, I would say 20 to 30 seconds, and make sure that that nice stretch and repeat it a couple of times to get that stretch all the way opened up. This opens up the piriformis muscle, which is responsible if it gets really tight for something called piriformis syndrome, which is pretty much a lot of times synonymous with sciatica. We talked about that earlier in the week. That's a really good stretch to start addressing some of the tightness over there, okay? So those are the three stretches. And now we're gonna get into some exercises. You guys see my cat walking around doing this business, it's crazy. Anyway, so now we're gonna get into some of the exercises that can really work to strengthen the hips, okay? Now there, again, there are certain muscles of the hips that are very, habitually weak, and I'm gonna focus on the top three ones that would really help you to strengthen up your hip and strengthen up how much power and how much strength you have in those hips, okay? So exercise number one, again, laying on your back. We're gonna work on the big gluteus maximus muscles, or the, the glute muscles, the butt muscles. They serve to extend the hip, and a lot of times when you're sitting for long periods of time as we do, those muscles get stretched out and they lose the efficiency when they're stretched out all the way and they're not strengthened. So lay on your back, all right? In this position, you can drop your arms down to your side. You wanna make sure that your abdominal area, you're not into an arched position. I'm, I'm gonna overly arch here. You can see I can slide my hands underneath my lower back. You wanna make sure that your lower back is pressed nice and firmly against the floor and you're engaging and pulling your rib cage into your spine to really brace your abdominal area. So in that position, you really want to squeeze your butt muscles and lift your pelvis off the table or off the floor, hold for a couple of seconds, and then bring back down. This is called your bridging exercise, and it's working really on activating the glute muscles, the extensors of the hip, okay? I'm gonna do a couple of more again. Note that I'm pulling my belly button into my spine, I'm tilting my pelvis, I'm not arching with my back, as you can see, but really tilting with my pelvis and engaging my glutes and getting it off the floor and coming back down, okay? This is called your bridging exercise. And of course, there are lots of modifications for this. And of course, there are lots more progressions for this. This can get a lot more exciting. You can work on doing single leg bridges where you're working on just one side. You can work on walkouts, which is gonna really start engaging not only the glutes, but the hamstrings. It does get a lot more exciting than that. But try that out, see how that works for you. Second exercise we're gonna work on is hip abduction. So laying onto your side, over this way, hope you guys can see me. 
okay? You're gonna bend the bottom knee and you're gonna straighten out the top leg. And this is working on your hip AB abductus. This is the muscle that pulls the leg away from the midline, okay? So in this position, you're gonna lift your leg off the floor and then back down. One of the common mistakes with making exercises like this or doing this particular exercise is that people kick the leg forward and they start using a little bit of the hip flexors and also the quads, which are usually way more dominant. You want to make sure that as you're looking straight ahead, you don't see that leg in your line of vision or in your periphery vision. And that's where you know that you want to work, okay? So lifting the leg up and down in that position is your hip abduction exercise. You can progress this exercise and make it more difficult by using a band or also using some weights attached to the bottom of your leg so that the load that you're lifting as you lift your leg off the floor is a little bit more challenging, okay? And the third and the last exercise that I wanna go over with you guys is a clamshell exercise. Um, along with the sciatic nerve, um, when we talked about that and we talked about the piriformis muscle, this specific exercise definitely does address the piriformis, okay? And it works on the external, that big external rotator of the hip. So laying flat on your side, Again, in this position, you want to bend your knees to about a 45 degree angle in this position. Keeping your heels together, you're gonna to lift your top knee to the ceiling without rotating your pelvis back, okay? So key things to remember here in terms of executing this exercise well is making sure that your hips are stacked very well on top of each other and you're not rotating back. So lifting the knee up to the ceiling as far as you can, keeping the heels together and then back down. And doing that, and you do that a couple of times, you're gonna start feeling some activation back there in the gluteal area. You are gonna feel this if you're doing this correctly, okay? That's called your clamshell exercise, all right? So for the exercises, I usually recommend that you start with um, sets of 10. Um, that's really usually standard for a lot of exercise um, programs. And with 10 repetitions, and I would say two or three sets of 10, you're gonna start getting some effective change. You should start feeling a burn. The way that you should feel it as you go along, it should be like, okay, this is okay. By the second set, um, you should be like, okay, this is challenging. And by the third one, you should start really starting to feel a little bit more engagement and a burn and a little bit more challenge as you go through the end of the exercise. So I really encourage you guys to try and progress yourself a little bit more. If it feels difficult for you, if it feels painful for you, try to modify and reach out and my cat is crazy. Try to modify and reach out, and I would, I'm happy to answer any questions for you guys. But try those exercises, try those stretches, see how it goes. I hope this was really helpful for you. Share this with someone who really needs some exercises and you think this may be beneficial for them. Next week, we're moving up, guys. We're going to be moving on to the lumbar spine. We spent some time on the knees and the ankles and the hips. And now we're going to move on to the lumbar spine. Okay? So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you guys next week. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.